Hello violinists, welcome to Pro Arm Strings. I'm Henriette and this is my favourite things from the sound of music from 101 Violin Christmas Songs by Hal Leonard. Gosh, that's a mouthful of a title. Um, I think we all know how this song sounds and there are a couple of interesting points to make in this piece. So we're going to stop start a little bit today. Uh, at first there isn't that much to worry about and all that I want to say to you in the first couple of rests just leave your bow to rest on the string and not retake the bow. You will come out alright if you just leave the bow in the rests, leave it still on the string. So here we go, we go one, two, three, one, two, three. That is our speed. I'll count us in for three. One, two, three. <laughs> So you've noticed when you play the first four bars, at the end of four bars, just wait. I'll just play those four bars again and I'll show you what happens. Just wait one beat here and then carry on up bow. Yes, that's, that's what it is. The following rest as well, just leave your bow to rest on the strings. And for me, you can just play open strings here. You know I'm a great fan of playing fourth fingers, but not this time because it's such a brightly sounded song. So you might add to that brightness with the open E strings. Now, when you have a look at the end of the second line, now the last bar of the second line, we've got two third fingers in a row. And I'd like you to experiment with placing one finger on two strings. So I'm going to set my third finger in the middle between the two strings. You can perhaps see that here. So I'm catching them both. I'm hoping that your strings are close enough together. Otherwise you might have to just squeeze it a little bit like that. But it's much nicer to play one third finger like this. Then when you hop across from one string to the next. Because it's always creating a little gap if you do that between the two notes. So try, try it for now to put one finger on two strings and guess what? The next two notes are two second fingers. So you've got to do that again. Then I'll place my second finger on two strings. So instead of hopping across, which creates that gap again, I'm placing my second finger in between the two strings. So we're getting the third finger on two strings first and then the second finger on two strings. I indicate that in my music because I don't want to get caught out and I write a little diamond shape in my notes so that I know where to place the other finger. I'll show you this. And you can see here I've put above the third finger on the D string, I've put a little diamond shape exactly on the line where the third finger on the A string is going to come so that I know when I put the third finger on D here, I need to place it on two strings. And the same happens here. I've got the second finger on the A string. Then I'm writing my little diamond on the second finger on the D string there. So that when I place my second finger here, I'm ready and I know it already that that second finger is going to come again there, you see. Now, whilst I'm having my music up and you might have your pencil in your hand, Let's just write a three here. So this is the third line, the fourth bar of the third line. The last note is a third finger, as you may have guessed. But then I want to avoid hopping my finger across diagonally across the strings. And I've got my pinky free, so I'm going to use my pinky, the fourth finger, on the G sharp. And in a moment I'll show you how to do that. So before we do that, let's have another practice at the end of the second line, shall we? Where we play the third finger on two strings followed by the second finger on two strings. So when I play this from uh, two bars earlier, you see how 
how nice and calm my left hand is. Whereas if I didn't do that, it would look like this. <laughs> I can't play that legato properly you see I have separations between each of the notes and I don't want that now I'm just carrying on and I'll show you the other fingering that we've discussed so this is the third line the second bar <laughs> pretend your pinky slides down the slide right here so it slides down here and it lands there on the D string and that's the easiest way to find that G sharp and that's a good technique to have you can occasionally use that and we use it when we want to avoid crossing the strings diagonally you can imagine that crossing the strings diagonally is not good for intonation it risks playing out of tune doesn't it Whereas if I can leave this finger down, it tells me exactly where the next note will be, the fourth, where the fourth finger will be, you see. Now let's put that all together, shall we? We're going back to the beginning, and this is our repeat. So we're leaving the bow down whilst we play rests, and then we're going to try and play third fingers on two strings and second fingers on two strings. One, two, three. <laughs> And some of you will have spotted that actually I could put my third finger on two strings one note earlier because I don't just play the third finger on the D string at the end of line two. I also play that same finger in the bar before. So this is the last beat of the penultimate bar of line two. You see, you could in theory place your third finger on two strings already there. Now then, let's carry on after the repeat, shall we? And I'm happily playing open strings still. One, two, three. <laughs> that this is the exact same section with the third fingers and the second fingers all right let's carry on now here you might have a very special fingering as well because this part is what we call a section of a chromatic scale where we play semitones and I will just show you the fingering so we're talking about the sixth line now and the third bar of the sixth line your fingering is going to be three four zero and then one and the one the first finger on e is f natural there you need to pull that back to the beginning of the string you see so three four is in essence the same technique as we had before except we're not crisscrossing the strings we're staying on the same string now but we'll play that sharp note with the fourth finger shall we try that so we'll just play this bar with the d sharp in and we're starting on the third finger d and <laughs> Shall we do that again? Awesome. Now let's carry on. I'll count us in one, two, three, rest, and then we'll play E, E, E. One, two, three, rest. Guess what? Here we can use the fourth finger again. On the 
7 notes or the 8th notes, you have to be very careful not to use too much bow because we don't want an accent there. If you get it like this, it's not good. You see, that is not as stylish as playing softer on that quaver. Together one more time. We're starting on the two E's. One, two, three, one. structure them and I want you to place little accents on every first beat of the bar I'm starting in the last on the last note of the seventh line one two three one two a lovely song to play. Shall we play it again without stopping this time? So whatever happens we'll carry on all the way through and we'll play it a little bit faster, shall we? I'll count us in two bars before we start. So have your bow ready, about in the middle of your bow, on the A string. One, two, three, one, two, three. <laughs> My favourite tune at the moment, I think. That was lovely playing. Well done. I wish you a very Merry Christmas and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Goodbye. <laughs>